Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Lily Bauckham. I'm the executive director of the Georgia Foundation for Agriculture. And I'm Laura Goble, the educational program coordinator for Georgia Farm Bureau. We want to thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and participating in the first ever Georgia Ag Experience STEM Challenge. This is the one and only ag-centric STEM challenge for elementary school students across Georgia. And you are among the first to compete. We had nearly 50 classes register for the spring challenge, and we hope that even more will participate this fall. As a reminder, this STEM challenge is a spinoff project of the Georgia Ag Experience Mobile Agriculture Classroom. We launched it just this January, and our state-of-the-art mobile unit allows your students to explore the vast opportunities in Georgia agriculture through digital learning and hands-on activities that come directly to your school. If you guys haven't had a chance to have a visit from the mobile classroom yet, please contact your local county farm bureau or visit our website at georgiaagexperience.org to schedule a visit. Now for what you've all been waiting for, it's almost time to announce the Georgia Ag Experience Spring 2021 STEM Challenge. For the winners, I'm gonna let our sponsor, Katie Sponberger, the Executive Director of the Georgia Association of Conservation Districts, join us and make that announcement. Katie? Hey everyone. Thank you, Lauren and Lily. We are super excited to be able to sponsor Georgia's first ever STEM challenge for elementary school students across the state. And my association works to educate students like you about the importance of keeping our soil healthy and our water clean. And this is especially important for our state's farmers because they rely on those natural resources to keep producing the foods that we all love to eat. So without further hesitation, I'm so excited to announce our grade level challenge winners. So our third grade class winner is Rookville Elementary's Quest Kids, taught by Miss Jennifer Carroll. These Carroll County students did a great job describing their challenge experience in their own words. Oh my goodness. The class even reached out to our organization to ask one of our staff members for expert advice. Congratulations to Rootville Elementary's third grade Quest Kids. Our, yay, <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> So our fourth grade class winner is Trinity Christian Schools Crusaders team. This class is located in Lawrence County and taught by Miss Nona Dasher. You all did an incredible job working with your local 4-H group and sending your soil sample to the University of Georgia for testing. Thank you for also creating a sign to tell others about how you are keeping your soil healthy. It's so important for you all to spread the word. Congratulations to Trinity Christian School's fourth grade Crusaders team. And our fifth grade winner is Dallas Elementary's Venture Soil Detectives, taught by Ms. Stephanie Atkinson in Paulding County. Yay. These students, yay. Yay. congratulations! congratulations. These students developed a new style video called Underground News Network, where they interviewed fellow students posing as experts in the field. These students did an excellent job explaining the results of their pH and soil test. Your video was especially creative among all the fifth grade submissions. So congratulations to Dallas Elementary's Winter Soil Detectives. And I do want to congratulate again all of our winners today. We are so excited for all of you and thank you all for participating in this challenge. Uh, we hope that you take everything you learned about soil health home um, and use that information to grow your own garden. So Lauren, I'm going to turn the program back over to you. We need teachers. Uh, please be on the lookout for an email from the Georgia Ag Experience team to claim your prize. Just as a reminder, um, the winning teachers will, rec will receive $250 classroom supply grant 
and a choice of a prize from GACD. So you'll get to pick um, between one of three kits. And students, raise your hands if y'all had a great time with this STEM challenge. I see some hands going up. Well, we are excited to announce that they will have a brand new challenge in the fall. So we'll be sending out some information in late summer. But before we sign off, I wanted to give you just a little hint about what that challenge will be. All I'm going to say is it's going to be a tremendous challenge. So we hope to see y'all next year. Y'all have a fantastic summer. Thank you so much for doing our first STEM challenge. We um, really enjoyed watching the videos and it was really hard to pick a winner. But thank y'all so much for being here. Y'all have a great summer and a fantastic weekend. Congratulations. Thank you. Greetings from Ritzville Elementary School. I am Audrey and along with my third grade quest class, I want to welcome you to our research study on how we can improve biodiversity and overall soil health. What is soil? Soil is home to many living creatures, such as bugs and worms. Soil even has, is, has, could possibly have bunnies or groundhogs. There, there's also many plants in soil, such as, well, there is strawberries and rosemary and flowers and grass. Soil is home to many living things. Soil is a dark brown and sometimes black and maybe light brown dirt pretty much but it's different than dirt soil is more for plants than well dirt is more not for plants because dirt is not as healthy soil is way more healthy that is what soil is To begin with, we identified our third grade garden bed, which currently grows strawberries and rosemary. We pulled weeds from the raised bed. The soil we are studying is a grayish or a light black color. We used our magnifying glass to identify insects, and we found tiny rocks and soil particles in the sample. We also poured water over our soil sample and into a colander to see if our soil allowed too much water to seep through the soil. Our soil did not hold water well. Finally, we collected a soil sample and put it in a brown bag to send to the University of Georgia to be tested. Hi, I am James. We began by asking ourselves how we can improve soil bio biodiversity and overall soil health. After having class discussions and research, we came up with this, controlling pollution of soil, creating more warmer culture within our bed, adding insects to our bed, making sure we have the correct amount of nutrients in our soil bed so that we have optimal growth of our strawberries and rosemary. Before we went too far, we had to identify biodiversity. We knew that bio meant life and diversity meant a variety of things. These things in relation to our STEM challenge are organisms. So we are studying how to make our garden habitat have more life organisms living together within our garden bed.
From this project, we've learned that we must pay attention to what's in our soil. Healthy soil grows healthy plants. We expect to see improvement to our soil this summer and fall by our production. Creating biodiversity in our gardens is necessary for optimal growth. Thank you, Thank you for, for giving us this opportunity to learn and grow. grow. If you never thought about planting and garden, I bet you thought you had to till or use wood fabric, but you don't. First, you need to test your soil. You want to make sure your, so your soil is dark and it sticks together and ha maybe have some, some living creatures. We call our county extension office and we learned that our garden was low in potassium and phosphorus. Our pH was fine. Our results showed that we needed, we needed to add organic fertilizer that will help our plants grow. We put cardboard to keep the weeds away and it also fed the worms. To make your soil rich, add compost and its nutrients that your soil will love. Then we added pollinator plants to attract insects. All of that would have washed away or had a lot of weeds in it if we did not add mulch. We made sure our mulch was very natural. To make sure our soil and plants got the start amount of water, we added a sprinkler system on a top. We had to continue weed eating, but the mulch made it a little bit easier. Then we created a composter. We learned that you can compost leaves, fruits, veggies, and cardboard or paper without ink. Now we will share about what we learned about soil health with others. To help tell others, we put signs all around the garden. I hope you enjoyed our garden video. This is Melody with Underground News, where we talk to the worms and learn about soil. A local farmer, Tyann, has contacted us needing help with her pumpkin garden at Dallas Elementary School. We have Easton on the scene, where he is talking with Tyann. Easton, what in the world is going on out there? Hi, I'm with Tyann here at her designated area, where she planned to put a pumpkin garden. Tyann, what are you needing help with? I need someone to test the soil to make sure it is appropriate ranges for the pumpkins I plan to grow. Why do you need to test the soil? If the soil is not appropriate for my pumpkins, it could possibly make my harvest insufficient and I won't be able to pro provide for my family. Soil is made of organic matter, water, air, and minerals. What is organic matter? Organic matter is plants and animals that are alive or were alive. When they die, they put nutrients into the soil that helps feed the plants that grow in the ground. Thanks, that gives me the information that I need. We have some activity going on over there. Let's see what's going on. Hi, 
Hi, what is your name and what are you doing here? Oh, hello. I'm Evan the pH Soil Scientist. Diane called me over here to test the pH of the soil in this vicinity. What is pH and what does it have to do anything with soil? pH is a way to measure how acidic or basic something is. It can range from 0 to 14. You really don't want your soil to be too high or too low because it can affect the plants in undesired ways. So we want to make sure the soil pH is appropriate for pumpkins because each plant requires a different pH. Pumpkins need a pH of 6.0 to 6.8. I have the test kit here and the results show the pH in this area is 5.9 which is a little too acidic. What a predicament! How can we fix this problem? Well, for that information, you will need to talk to Abby at the Paulding County Extension Office. Thank you so much, Evan, for this information. Let's go see what's going on. What are you doing out here? I am checking the area for macro and microorganisms. It is important to have these living things in the soil to keep the plants healthy. What kinds of organisms have you found so far? Well, macroorganisms are living things you can see with our eyes. So far, I have seen ants, spiders, ladybugs, worms, aphids, and caterpillars. I will need to take a sample of the soil to my lab to check for microorganisms because I need a microscope to see them. Thank you so much. Back to you, Melody. Breaking news! The results from a soil test have come back. Let's go straight to Christopher at the Paulding County Extension Office for the results. Hello, thank you for having me in today. We have just gotten the results back from the lab. As you can see, the phosphorus is low and so is the potassium. But if you look at the charts, the calcium is also quite high. The magnesium is right where it needs to be. The zinc is also sufficient as well as the magnesium. The pH you have already discussed with my coworker Evan. And so now we will go over to my coworker, Abby, to discuss how to fix the pH. Hello, and thank you for having me today. I'm tired of being stuck in my office all day. As Evan said earlier, the pH is too low, which means it's too acidic. To raise the pH, Tyann needs to add lime to the area. In addition, the pumpkin patch needs a little of all the nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, pota and potassium, so she can use a balanced fertilizer of each. That was interesting. I never knew that soil needed so much attention to grow plants. Thank you to all our specialists and to you for tuning in. Stay dirty!